Hey, it's Chris. Personally, I'm really excited to see Stage Manager, Apple's new multitasking feature, come to my iPad via an official iPad OS update. Not everybody seems to get it though. So today I'm dedicating an entire video to helping people see the light. So coming up, we're gonna talk about what Stage Manager is and what it isn't. We're gonna talk about what Bloomberg's Mark Gurman gets wrong about Stage Manager. We're also gonna cover the Stage Manager controversy, if you can call it that. And then I've also got some answers to your burning Stage Manager questions, things you've been asking about in terms of how it works and how it won't work. Okay, so what is Stage Manager? What isn't Stage Manager? Let's cover that right off the bat. Here's what Apple says on the iPadOS 16 website. Stage Manager is a new way to multitask and get things done with ease. Resize windows to look the way you want, and for the first time on iPad, see multiple overlapping windows in a single view. So that's the basic, simple, straightforward answer. Essentially, you have layered windows now, and you can have stuff floating on top of each other, behind, you can group them any way that you want, and then you can take those groups and store them over on the side for easy switching and access. Now, right at the surface, before even diving any deeper, this is enough to get somebody like me, a big iPad fan, really excited because I've been looking for a more powerful, a more customizable multitasking experience for a long time. And one of the things I'm excited about is just being able to have three or four windows next to each other, not even overlapping, just next to each other on the 12.9 inch iPad for the first time. So I think this is just exciting anyways, but when you take that and you pair it with the new iPadOS external monitor support, now you've got yourself a genuine game changer in terms of iPad productivity. I don't see how this can make anybody who's an iPad user do anything other then smile, because my productivity is about to go through the roof as soon as this hits. I don't know about yours. And the reason is very simple. I'm not just saying this. There will be less constraints in terms of how I multitask and how I use iPad OS. So the guardrails are starting to come off. The training wheels are getting lost. But now let's start to dig a little deeper. So the story about how Stage Manager came into being in the first place is actually really interesting. So Craig Federighi, Apple's senior VP of software engineering, in other words, the guy who steers the ship when it comes to the software experience on all of Apple's devices, sat down with Daring Fireball's John Gruber at WWDC at the talk show live and talked about how the team arrived at this as a solution. Now, I sat through this hour-long interview so you don't have to, and in summary, what he's saying here is that the experience on the Mac by default is messy. You open up windows, those windows start to get layered, and there's some clutter, and you spend a lot of your time just actively managing all those windows, cleaning up that mess. So he and the team dreamed up a way for people to keep their piles of windows more organized and more useful with little to no effort, and that's when Stage Manager was born. And then he said something really, really interesting to me. He said, it's gonna be really interesting during the betas to see which users resonate with this new feature, Stage Manager, and which people say, no, that's really not for me. In other words, the translation is, this is going to be an option. Apple's not forcing anybody to use Stage Manager. It's just a new tool in the toolkit. So if you liked multitasking on iPad the way it already was, great, carry on. If you were looking for a more powerful, customizable new experience, here you go. It's kind of like the paper-like screen protector that I'm always talking about. It's just an option. So if you don't like it, don't use it. I'm gonna use it because I do really like it. Same thing with Stage Manager. So it's like on the Mac, you already have all these options to multitask. You've got spaces, you've got mission control. Some people just command H to hide stuff and see what's underneath. Or some people do command tab to move in and out of different apps. There's all these different styles. And the great thing is, you can use whatever works best already. Apple's just adding in this new feature. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a new option. Options are good. I can't imagine anyone complaining about new options. But then further along in the interview, he starts talking about Stage Manager being brought to iPad OS. And he said it's kind of the opposite. Whereas on the Mac, things are messy by default. On the iPad, it's always been a really clean experience by default. And so bringing Stage Manager to the iPad is almost like the opposite in that you're kind of getting this option to create 
a bit of a controlled mess. So he goes on to say, quote, they wanted to capture the spirit of the iPad and yet open it up in such a huge way to overlapping windows and that broader sense of access for multitasking. So the Mac was messy, stage managers here as a way to help people clean that up. The iPad wasn't messy, couldn't get messy, and now stage managers here to help you get a bit messier if you want to. So for those people who really liked the iPad super simple, which by the way, is a lot of people. There's a lot of people who can just pick up an iPad and feel at home and at ease, especially some older people, versus just a Mac, where things might feel a little bit more complicated to them, and they like that simplified experience. For those people, nothing's really changed. But for the people who craved a little bit more, who wanted to push the limits, wanted that more Mac-like experience, now that's here. You don't have to use it, though, but you can. Now, you know what else you don't have to use, but you probably should? The Moft Snap tablet stand and the Moft Snap case for iPads. If you didn't know, Moft has an entire lineup of magnetic accessories that all work together. They call it the Snap System, and I particularly love the Snap tablet stand and Snap case because they work so well together. So right now, I've got an ultra-wide setup on my desk, and it's so cool to have the Snap tablet stand holding my iPad up right under the monitor because it's so minimal, it just disappears. And then I can move my iPad over to the Magic Keyboard with the Snap case still on, because it's so thin, it's compatible with the Magic Keyboard, and then I can get some serious work done like that. I mean, talk about multitasking. The snap stand folds up like origami, which lets it adapt for use in several different positions, and then the whole snap system is built to be portable and interoperable, meaning everything is super thin and light, easy to pack up and take with. So I'd highly recommend hitting the link in the description to check these and the other snap system accessories out. All right, let's talk a little bit about what I feel people might be getting wrong about Stage Manager for the iPad, starting with Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. The other day he tweeted, first thoughts on iPad Stage Manager, I don't think it's a real functional improvement over what exists today, to which I replied, 1000% disagree. Now, obviously nothing personal against Mark or anything. We just happen to have a differing opinion when it comes to stage manager here. But in his newsletter the other day, he called it a confusing mess. Well, first of all, stage manager was just announced and it's in developer beta right now, not even the public beta, which means it's kind of supposed to be messy, right? This is when everybody works all the bugs out. So by the time real users get their hands on it, everything's working well and is not a mess. I mean, anyone can basically sign up for a developer account, it's like $99 a year, and then you can download this beta software and mess around with it like you're a developer even before the public beta, but when you do that, there's an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement in there, which is supposed to keep people from reviewing it before it's ready to be reviewed. Exactly what basically a ton of YouTube channels and press outlets do anyways, right? And the reason is simple, Apple's saying, we're gonna put this out here to make a better product for everybody, make sure it's ready for everybody, but the trade-off is we don't want you to give a review-like judgment before the software is looking its best, before it's ready. So anyways, he goes on in the newsletter to say that it's not really clear to him what exactly the purpose of this software is but then he goes on in the next sentence to basically describe exactly what it is. Quote, it essentially lets you place either one window or a few windows at the forefront of your workspace, and you can line up your recent apps on the left side of the screen, allowing you to quickly jump into them. I don't know, it seems pretty clear and pretty awesome to me. But he goes on to say this about Stage Manager for Mac. Quote, I see what Apple's trying to do here, but it's just yet another multitasking layer. It oddly doesn't replace spaces or mission control, but works with them. I think Apple needs to pick a direction and stick with it. Honestly, I don't really get this statement because it's kind of like saying, how dare Apple give people options and not force everyone to do things one way. And that one way is just the way that I, this one user, like. And yet I just told you in that interview where Craig was talking to Daring Fireball's John Gruber, he was sitting there explaining how the team wanted to give people more options so that people can use their software the way that they like the best. And that's why they wanted to provide yet another really interesting option because people aren't all the same. They have different workflows and they think differently and they want the software to adapt to everybody to serve them the best. So he goes on to say that he feels like stage manager makes more sense to him on the iPad. Well, you know, Macs are different than iPads. So there's some difference in the experience, but you know, the way that this feature works is essentially the same, whether you're on a Mac or you're on an iPad fundamentally. So does it make sense or doesn't it make sense? You can't really have it both ways. Personally, I think it makes a lot of sense. Again, options, good. Personalization, good. If anything, 
the way things were on the iPad before was more restrictive, forcing people to do things one way. And now we're doing the opposite. We have this extra option. I just don't see it as a bad thing. One thing German says that I think is insightful is that Stage Manager could be a precursor to an extended Mac display feature that's in the works for Apple's headset. Because actually, if you're paying attention and kind of reading between the lines, WWDC was probably full of all kinds of pre-AR VR headset building blocks, like pass keys for logging in without a keyboard, room plan was announced, which is a Swift API for understanding room dimensions, then AR Kit 6 with 4K video capture for quick placement of AR objects in the real world, and then even Apple's buy now, pay later service would be a good way to help people afford a really expensive first gen headset, AR, VR, whatever. So add Stage Manager in the mix and maybe we haven't even seen the most exciting thing about Stage Manager, that you could interact with these windows and spaces in an AR headset. I feel like I'd be remiss to say that something else that's very exciting, at least to me, is being able to offer some exclusive daily tech wallpapers to the audience this year. We've never done that before. I sat there and designed a bunch of what I think are really cool, high quality wallpapers for all your different devices with lots of different varieties, works for mobile, your iPad, your Mac. So I'll link up the wallpapers. And of course, if you get one, it does help support the channel. So let's talk about what some people are referring to as a controversy in that Apple is limiting the stage manager feature to only iPads that have an M1 chip. So if you have a 2018 iPad that you really like, but it doesn't have the M1, you're not gonna be able to use Stage Manager. Even if you have a newer model, 2020, and it's a pro, and it doesn't have the M1 chip, you're not gonna be able to use Stage Manager. And understandably, there's some disappointment there. However, let's zoom out a little bit and just talk about the way the world works in general. New products are supposed to have new features because if they didn't, then who would buy them? They'd be exactly the same as the old product. There'd be no need for it. It's like this happens with cars all the time. I mean, every time I buy a car and it has the latest, greatest features, I'm like, great, this is awesome. And then a year or two later, the new model comes out and it has even better new features. And it's like, well, dang. But, but that's the way that it goes. We all just understand that. Newer car model is going to be better. But when it comes to iPads, for some reason, People are like, no, the new iPad needs to be the same as this older model. It can't have new features. That's not fair. All right, now trust me, I do feel the pain because iPads are not cheap. They are expensive. But I think what really has people upset here, potentially, is if they feel like Apple is somehow artificially limiting older iPads and just saying it has to have the M1 when maybe it really doesn't in order to drive a cycle of upgrades. Now, Craig did another interview, I think it was with TechCrunch recently, where he explained this decision to keep Stage Manager limited to the M1 iPads. And basically what it boiled down to was Apple not wanting people who experience Stage Manager to experience it in a disappointing way. Wanting people to like it, to not be frustrated with hangups and slowness and glitches. Now, Ben Lovejoy from 9to5Mac put it like this. All this strikes me as credible, that it simply isn't possible to run the Stage Manager feature on A12 X or A12Z iPad Pro models with the level of capability and performance the company wants to offer. So he does feel the company's motives are good and not based on wanting to sell more iPads. But he basically goes on to argue that older iPad users would surely rather have somewhat of a dumbed down version of Stage Manager, even if it isn't the full experience somehow, like a light version that maybe doesn't need the M1 chip rather than having no version. But here's the thing, and it struck me over the weekend as I was playing around with that giant Samsung tablet I reviewed a while back. The iPad is smooth, just buttery smooth. And if all you ever use is an iPad, you take that smoothness for granted. When I was using the enormous Samsung tablet, which I want to like because it's so huge, it seems like it should be such a cool thing. And there are things that I really like about it, like I talked about before. What really struck me when using the Samsung tablet was how not smooth everything was. Things were jumpy, things were slow. It just didn't flow. It didn't feel right coming from an iPad. Basically, it was just a much rougher experience. Definitely not optimized on the level that iPad software and hardware is. So when I hear Craig saying that Apple, as a maker of luxury products, I mean, they're affordable luxury, but luxury nonetheless, wants to have a really great, smooth, enjoyable experience and doesn't want customers to be disappointed, I get what he's saying. And actually, I think it's the best approach. So this nine to five Mac article goes on to say that 
you know, this is gonna dent people's confidence in the longevity of Apple devices because in the past people always thought, well, Apple devices, they last forever and Apple always gives you all these updates for so many years, way longer than Android tablets or other tablets. Well, nothing's changed now. This is gonna be the default Apple experience with Stage Manager from this point forward. So all new iPads are gonna have this and all those new iPads are still gonna be supported for years and years and years longer above and beyond what the rest of the industry is doing just with this new feature from here on out. So look, I think a bit of an illustration might be apt, right? So I used to have a gas powered car and I recently got an electric car and guess what? The electric car is so much faster than the gas powered car that I still own. And in a way people complaining about why can't my non M1 powered iPad do these things that the M1 can is sort of like saying, well, why can't my non electric car go as fast and do as many things as this brand new electric car? Well, the reason of course, is that they're powered by different internals and the capability is just not there on the one vehicle like it is in the other. And in some cases, you do just have to buy something new in order to get those new capabilities. So honestly, if it really was just totally arbitrary and Apple was just drawing an artificial line in the sand saying these iPads will have stage manager and those won't just because we declare it to be so, if that came out, I'd be like, well, that's not cool. But it doesn't appear that that's the case. I'm with Ben, I believe Apple and Craig that they just wanna offer the best experience. And I think that's their right. And I think it's the right move. At the end of the day, I think you can hardly fault Apple for making cool new software features that specifically take advantage of some of the cool new hardware features that they're putting out. That's what people love about Apple. Also, just a little context I think is helpful because there's plenty of features that were just announced that are coming to non M1 iPads. For instance, the new Freeform app is gonna be available for any app that supports iPad OS. Not every iPad, but any iPad that can run iPad OS 16 is going to be able to take advantage of this brand new, really cool looking app. All right, I'm gonna answer some of your iPad OS 16 and Stage Manager specific questions that you've asked me. I have answers to share with you, definitive answers. So somebody asked me, can you resize or hide any of the Stage Manager elements? Can you hide the dock to get more room with multiple windows? Can you hide those groups of apps over on the side? The answer is yes. You can go into Stage Manager settings and make some changes, make some tweaks, tune it how you want to. Or you can also just hold down in Control Center on the Stage Manager toggle there and you'll have the option to minimize those recently opened apps or the dock. So you can really customize this. The next question is, can you have four windows side by side on the iPad screen, not overlapping? The answer is yes. On the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you can have four side by side, but you have to have the more space enabled in display zoom in the settings. So it's not gonna work with 11 inch iPads. Next question is, is there a way to expand apps full screen on an external monitor while keeping the iPad itself free or with a different app? The answer to that is yes, apps can be full screen on the external display. I mean, anything that can be resized can be resized however you want it to be. But there are some apps that don't support current multitasking that can only be scaled. And for those, you're only gonna be able to scale them and you won't be able to go full screen. Another question was, can you play full screen movies on the secondary display? The answer is yes. So if you wanna be doing something else and have a movie going up there, you can do it. Somebody asked me about clamshell mode. Does the external monitor support feature work if you turn off the iPad screen, i.e. clamshell mode? The answer is no. Last question, somebody said, are ultra wide and portrait monitor or display sizes supported? The good news is ultra wides are supported. I just got that brand new LG, the 40 inch, and I'm gonna play around with it, show you guys what that looks like when the public beta hits, but portrait mode monitors, are not supported. So there you go, this is a pretty comprehensive video. We really talked about a lot in terms of stage manager and I haven't even shown you guys the beta because I'm playing around with it, but I'm respecting the NDA. When the public beta hits, I'm gonna give you the signature daily tech in-depth look and show you all the little ins and outs. I know you guys love those videos. So get subscribed if you're not already. We will go through all of that. I hope this video was useful. Let me know what you learned down in the comments. Give me a timestamp with your favorite part of this video. Uh, otherwise, get subscribed to the podcast. New episodes, usually on Fridays. The behind the scenes at WWWC, I get comments that people really like that. So if you haven't heard it, go check it out. It's linked up down below. Also, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, on Instagram and Twitter. Really get on the Twitter. If you're on Twitter, check us out because we've got some really useful threads that are just packed full of information that you don't wanna miss. That's enough uh, talking about trying to convince you guys to do stuff. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.